Hey guys, um, this is going to be a little bit of a tutorial. Uh, hopefully I won't bore you to death. Basically what I'm going to do is show you my process of designing knives and show you how it kind of moves into uh, an actual piece of steel. Uh, but basically there's many ways of doing this. You can do it on paper, you can do it on computer, you can do a graphic design. There's so many different programs out there that you can do this. Ultimately it's going to come down to um, how you get it from paper or computer to steel okay so if you're a graphic designer uh, or you know CAD you can send it to your water jet guy your water jet guy will cut the steel uh, sometimes you have to do what I do is you get it from a paper design then convert it to a computer design then from that computer design send it to the water jet guy and then he cuts it or even better yet what I do a lot of times I just make copies like 10 12 copies of these glue it directly onto the steel once this is glued onto the steel I just cut around the outline and then use the rest of them for reference and then so on and so forth um, but what a lot of things is you know for me in order for me to design a knife I have to be in the right frame of mind uh, you know I, I like it calm cool you know nice and quiet is like the best way I can say it uh, no one's in the house right now, all right. Um, as you guys know, I, I work nighttime, so either if I have some time early in the morning or after I get up from a nap, I like to jump into my drawings and just start knocking stuff out. Not all of them are keepers, and you're going to see right here that some of my older work is really, eh, it's okay, I could do better. Um, but what I do is I, I try to find inspiration, and inspiration comes in a lot of different forms. I could see knives pretty much anywhere. I think I one of the biggest inspirations is I dig through I used to dig through my grandfather's garage and find this old rusty 007 folding knife, you know, stuff like that or you know, pull out your granddad's uh bayonet that he got from World War II or in the Korean War or better yet go into your junk drawer and see what they got there. Um, also, I'm a big fan of the magazines. I, I don't have a lot of time to read, but uh, if you if you make knives for a living or you're a hobbyist, it only makes sense to pick up a couple magazines. I like Blade Magazine, and I like um, uh, I think it's Blade Illustrated or Knife Illustrated. I mean, Knife Illustrated I think is even better than this magazine. You know, sorry if I'm hurting anybody's feelings, but um, this has to do more with the trends that are coming out so this is more of a trend magazine in other words you know what's hot what's not who the new designers are who the uh you know you know there you go what's new exactly what i said all right so you got all the nice pictures in there you know so you even got jason browse's uh new folder in there uh stuff like that and like I said, it's a trend magazine, so it's it's really cool. It tells you what's going on. You got uh, Mr. Bussy stuff in there. Um, but you know, like I said, it's to each his own where you get your inspiration from. But I also really dig like when they show you how they're making stuff. You know, the tests and all that kind of stuff. You know, and advertisements are for one thing. Oh yeah, the Blade Show, 2013, May 31st to June 2nd. Sorry, I will not be going to that one. I wish I was, but uh, I'm just not going to be able to. But in any case, uh, magazines are another good source to look at and appreciate other artists' designs. I didn't say copy. I said appreciate. Um, and that's one of the things with uh, magazines and all this other stuff. You might be going for a certain look or for a certain style. Just try to keep it to your own original uh, tastes. Um, but I do like it. I mean, I love these magazines. I, you know, I got a subscription to both. Also, you know, Tops. I always buy. Uh, I always get a lot of stuff from Tops. I have a ton of Tops knives. I mean, like boxes of knives from Tops. And every time they come out with a new stuff, I just go to their website and purchase it right away. So, but again, what I like about Tops is that they actually use other designers to design their knives, and then they uh, produce them which is really nice and if I can get a, ever get a hold of uh, Mike I might go in that direction someday but uh, just want to give you an idea of some of the inspirations you could look at the design look at the features um, I don't like all the bells and whistles that you see on a lot of knives uh, I think sometimes people go crazy with choils and jimping and you know it, they believe they believe one guy's opinion on a knife because he has a lot of subs that to me is not proof 
um, testing through multiple channels, through multiple environments, through multiple opinions may sought to you know look like it's a little bit of a, a, a truth but again it's really up to the person that purchases it um, if you're purchasing a knife you got to be comfortable with it jimping or not choil or not and I think what most people fail to realize is that you can look at a knife and fall in love with it or you can hate it immediately just like anything you look at a car and you say oh that car's ugly or you know you know, you, you look at your spouse, you know, obviously I hope your spouse was very attracted to you and still is. But again, you know, we're very visual creatures. And what I try to do is when I put it on paper, when I put my knives and my tools on paper, I have to step back and look at it. And I have to see if it's uh, visually pleasing to me. And if it's not, I scrap it and I move on. And that's it. And all it takes is a little bit of a turn or a torque or uh, you know placement of the um, you know where the holes are going to be little simple stuff like that can make or break your design all right so what I'm going to do is go over some of the designs that that I use or, or some of the stuff that I have made in the past and you know I just use a regular graph pad this is a uh, four squares per inch basically it's a their quarter inch if you can see that their quarter inch uh, squares and then four of them equal an inch this is one of the bigger pads. This is, you know, when I want to use some big knives. And you'll see in here, when I first started, some of the stuff was just, eh, it was a little bit too, I don't know, kitschy or, you know, I was following the trends that were basically what everybody else was saying. Okay, so I was following stuff and, you know, like, oh, you got to have jimping, you got to have a choil right near the blade. All right, I never, I never try to put choils near blades. I don't think it's safe. I don't think it's a good idea um, and this is just some of the stuff that I would come up with you know and it's just very very simple rudimentary stuff um, you know putting extra holes here and extra divots there it's not it's not rocket science guys it's really pretty simple then I was trying to make some type of uh, all-encompassing tactical pry bar you know that everybody's doing because it's trending right that's what everybody wants they want the newest and best um, you know, this is just a simple little belt knife. This is like a simple little, uh, I don't know what I was doing, bushcraft knife. Alright, very simple. Alright, and then I started getting a little bit better at it. I started looking at the handle. Okay, I really like this drop handle. Uh, not everything needs a uh, lanyard hole, especially on a 6 inch blade. If you're going to go larger than 6 inches, I would suggest um, putting a lanyard hole, but again, it's not necessary. It's up to the person. All right, so this is my large pad, and then this is my travel pad that I always take with me. All right, this is the eight by uh, eight and a half by eleven, and some of the stuff is really rudimentary, really small. Um, see again, so this is my early work where I would do these big choils. It's not necessary. This is some kind of jungle um, encompassed. Uh, I think it's yeah, a trench knife kind of thing and this is all early early work alright and then the other night when I decided to do this is some type of Japanese you could see what I was trying to do with the handle I was changing it up and then the other day I kinda had an epiphany I was looking at uh, was it Berg's uh, I think it's Tom Berg's Tim Berg, whatever his name is he's actually a very famous uh, knife maker and I had an epiphany. I was like watching his show. That was Blade Brothers. It's on Discovery Channel now. And I had an epiphany. Basically, what happens is you have to kind of design something that, in my opinion, something's going to take off within your knife making. And I think it's very personal. I, I, like, if you find something that you really enjoy doing and it hits, it's going to hit like a thunderbolt. Okay? If it doesn't hit like a thunderbolt, maybe that's not the design. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, yesterday I was trying to look for that one piece. Now, you guys can go up to the website and you can look at my knives and tell right away they are utility knives. Um, I do make some, you know, a little exotic, like the Talon is a small little self-defense knife, stuff like that. This is just like other drawings and stuff that I was working on. But then I was working on stuff and this kind of came around, okay? 
Now, I don't even know what to call this. I just know that it was late last night, uh, probably about 4 in the morning. And I came up with this design that I kind of like. I don't have a name for it. It's a nice, big, thick piece of steel. It's got that nice, curved handle. I like the idea of having these big holes, although I could put a handle on it. I didn't even have the dimensions in there. But this is what happens when you let the juices flow, when, you're, when you have time to think. You're not chasing the kids around the house or paying the bills or any of that crazy nonsense. And this, to me, is very appealing. Now, that being said, I do have other designs that will be had to be made before that. Like a lot of people have realized that this was the um, this was the the second version of the last ditch. Okay, I still have quite a few of those I have to make. Um, this is the tactical axe that I started with and I just want to give you guys an idea of how you start on paper and then it goes into computer okay this is the scaled down version of my tactical axe okay you can see that this is called a Seth uh, I do actually have the steel ready for this alright some other things that I've learned to do is to have contests and actually have people design their own knives now what you have to do with this is this is from a gentleman, uh, Kennedy, I can't even say his name, uh, Genedy. Genedy is from, I think, the, the Ukraine. He's a fantastic knife designer, and what he does is he's actually got all the CAD programs in there. I can't do CAD, so what I had to do was draw it on paper first and then change it over and change it up a little bit. This knife is going to be called the Mark I Scout, and the Mark I Scout is going to be part of my production line. The first word, Mark, is actually his son's name. He actually, I asked him for permission to use his design. He said okay. So this is going to be one of my designs. Now, this is a proof. Okay, so the proof is actually in CAD format right now on my computer. But I wanted to show you that on paper goes into this type of format. And then this goes into the CNC machine or water jet. And then you can cut multiple blanks. Alright, so this is coming pretty soon. Another one I designed completely by hand is the wingman. Okay, again, I just looked at a couple elements. Um, a lot of feedback that I got was that there was a there was a lot of my hunting buddies. They don't like big knives. They like small knives so that they can get into the chest cavity and get into the animal, and they needed something small enough, but that will fit in their hand. One of the major things that they wanted was they wanted um, jimping, definitely. It had to be a drop point so you could put your finger over it and good handle capability as long as the handle wasn't too big. Also, stainless. I don't know why, but some hunters are, are pretty, um, I guess lazy would be the best way to put it. But my friend is a hunter and, and he says, you know, the knife that you made me in carbon steel rusts. I was like, well, blood is liquid. So if you don't wipe off the blood and oil it, it's going to rust. So... Learning from that, I decided that this is going to be in uh, 154 cm, okay, as well as this one. This bushcraft knife, or I guess Mark 1 Scout, will be in stainless to give some stainless options. But again, I got the proof back, okay. Now this is ready to go into the computer and to be cut, okay. This design was something I totally drew up on paper first. Goes paper, proof, from the proof into the computer, computer gets cut. The last one I wanted to show you was basically, uh, I'm calling this one like the camp chopper or something like that. I don't know, it's really big. You can see I, I had to pull it out and scotch tape it together because it was so big. This is going to be made out of uh, D2 steel. I originally wanted to make it out of A2, but again, it just you know worked out that we're going to use D2. It's going to be very thick, about a quarter inch thick. Uh, really comfortable handles, you know, again, placement of the lanyard holes, little little ramp with jimping on it, paper, and then I got the proof back the other day. Here's the proof, okay? And you can see it takes up the whole paper. Obviously, it's going to be a lot bigger than this paper. The actual blade length is 12 inches, and the handle is 5.5. So you're looking at a, probably a 17.5 inch knife overall. And this is for those jobs that for guys that don't want to carry axes but want to carry a large camp knife or camp machete although it's not classified as a machete because it's going to be over a quarter inch thick it's going to be a big heavy chopper if 
you don't want to carry an axe, now you got a replacement. A um, couple other things. This actually was something I was working on. I'm going to have to redo this because the design didn't really work out. Um, it was something that, again, I put it on paper, but when I looked at it on the computer, it didn't look right. Whatever the conversion they did was not correct. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this and I'm going to make copies and I'm going to make it in steel first. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I have to make it in steel to actually give it that 3D dimension. If it comes out in steel correct, I'm just going to take that steel blank and send it to the water jet guy or just make my own. All right, so that's pretty much it, guys. I want to give you guys a little bit of an insight of uh, how I do my designs, my drawings. Everything that I do starts on paper somewhere, whether you do it on a piece of loose leaf paper, graph paper, or you do it on your computer in some CAD or graphic design. Um, I, I'm a true believer in uh, function uh, versus finish. You know, you, you still got it. It's still got to look good and be appealing if you want to sell your knife. But it also has to function like a knife. Oh, uh, well, one last thing. Um, basically, what I do is, and I know it's kind of funny. I'll take this, but I have this metal. I, I don't even know what they call this. This is like a metal cabinet uh, clipboard thing. I think like the UPS guy or whatever they carry these things. Uh, I got it at Staples, and this is where I carry all my stuff around. So if you're ever interested in figuring out how, you know, I put my pad in there, and I have basically all my little shapes and designs, okay, my big circles, my, uh, I think this is actually like a tactical uh, template thing. Yeah, windage deflection <laughs> from the military. I got a drill conversion cart, so when I'm trying to figure out drill size holes, um, actually, you can get this free at knifemakers.com. Couple squares, rectangles. All right. I think uh, who makes this? See the name there? Stat Stady there. You can buy these in packets. Um, you know, well, I use these pencils. I don't use regular pencils because these are, are a lot easier. And you know, eraser. I even got a. I think they call this a stylus or a square or something like that. That's you know, the old chart thing, but. Basically, um, everything fits in this little aluminum box clipboard, and this allows me to carry it around wherever I want, on the fly, if I see something that sparks my interest, just pull out my small pad and start drawing, okay? Um, you know, just little simple things like that it makes my life a lot easier. So that's pretty much it guys, I hope I've given you some, uh, a little bit of inspiration, maybe, uh, you know, made your life a lot easier. I know when I first started I was drawing on just regular white paper and it was hard for me to line up lines and it hit me, you know, it was very simple, just get graph paper moron. And uh, it got very simple after that. And again, everything here leads to steel. and. You know, the visualization, the passion, all that stuff should first start somewhere, basically, the drawing board. All right, guys, that's it. Um, go to 3 I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope you learned something. Talk to you soon. Out.